One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Joe. I'm here again. Fine, fucking Lee. Finally, I have managed to crawl away from my daily grind and do another series of videos. So here I am back in my mama's room again while they're out doing shopping and stuff. And look, I have, I don't have makeup or wig, but I have this. Good old Murphy. My name's Murphy. Or whatever the fuck he says. Yeah, this Murphy's gonna keep me company. Alright, let's get this shit fucking started. Cause I wanna see how far I can get. And if I run out of fucking, um, you know, my phone runs out of battery or space or whatever, I'm gonna load this phone up so I can't even fucking breathe. Let's see. All right, I think this is where we were at. Sam stretches against the wall like he's been working hard. HC looks over and does a double take at Sam. Holy God, Sam, what? HC motions to him. What is all that red stuff? Sam, darkly, the blood of pinkos. HC, oh my God, it's all like one word too, like run together. Sam, haha, <laughs> just playing. I was just mixing paint. HC, paint? He comes over closer to Sam. HC, are you the one who's been painting all the pink peas on the doors? Sam, aw, you've seen my work. He brushes the snow off himself. I'm flattered. HC, holy shit, man, all the fancy people have been talking about you. Sam, good things? HC, they want to skin you alive. Sam, wow, I didn't know they liked me that much. Love to death, they say. HC, come on, man, this is serious. You're playing a very dangerous game. All first letters capitalized here. You know, like the story with the big game hunter and he, Sam, yeah, 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 I know the reference. It's also the subtitle to our first episode. HC, out of character. It is? Sam nods. Yeah, you know, History Channel, two hour special, Hose of Liberty, a very dangerous game. That's the whole title. <laughs> HC, wow, I didn't know that. He shakes it off. He goes back in character. Anyway, uh, yeah. But with you, it's different. I don't know who's the hunter and who's the game. Is that what they said in the real show? I can't remember. They might have. Sam, maybe we're all a little bit of both down here. HC, huh? Sam, I mean, none of us are making the real decisions. Not a common hoe like Lemon or Honey. Not a businessman like me. Not even a rich man like you. Not really. HC. Wow, it's getting a little dark for me. It just started getting dark for him. That's funny. Sam. Yeah, we go there. <laughs> that used to be the tagline for Degrassi. You guys ever watch that shitty ass show? We go there. God, that nobody says that shit anymore. That's a little 15-year-old edginess right there. HC. Anyway, yeah, he shifts awkwardly. I want out. I don't want to do this anymore. Sam just looks at him for a long moment. Then he gives a creepy, suspicious laugh. Sam whispers in HC's ear, who you're citing these lines for? Who put you up to this? HC, huh? What? He pulls back. No one. I've just had enough of this weird garbage. Sam, it's not garbage. It's not even really a game. But I know that. You know that. You've always known that. Or maybe it is a game, but the greatest game of all, where losing means death and victory is the only option. <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like this is like really from the show, but I can't remember. My face looks really bad in this light, too. Like, I get so self-conscious because I'm like, the shininess, and then my- this side is like all crinkled up. I'm just like, I'm one of those people now. I'm just like, oh god, I look bad all the time. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? The light is fucking making my eyes look cool, though. Um, where was I? Um, HC, you're creeping me out. Sam, good. So go ahead. Let them think you're having your doubts. Whoever they are. It doesn't matter to me. You came back once and you'll come back again. We're not the chess players, you know. We're just the pawns. Even the king and queen in chess are really nothing but pawns. Ah, he's dropping some deep shit. Sam wanders away then and heads to the back of the bar, going down the trap door into the cellar. HC, dot 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 dot, long pause, dot 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 dot. What the fuck was that all about? This story has morals and shit now? <laughs> he hears a voice from off to the side then, trying to get his attention. He looks over and sees Kelly motioning <laughs> to him from one of the corner tables. He hesitates, but then cautiously goes and sits with him. 
HC, what's up? Kelly, I saw you and Sam talking. I just hoped you weren't fighting too harsh. HC, huh? We weren't fighting at all. Kelly, that's good. Sam's my good friend and all, even if he's a little kooky. He likes you a lot, you know. HC, likes me? <laughs> yeah, right. Kelly, no, really. He smiles coyly. He says, you got all your lipstick in the right place. <laughs> HC, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. Kelly, I don't know, but give him a break. He's like a hooker with a heart of gold, which I don't know what the fuck that means either, but I guess it's like a thing people say, what it, wherever that expression comes from. Doesn't that come from Pretty Woman or some shit? I don't, I don't know, actually. HC, I think it comes from that movie with Cher. What is that, Moonstruck? I think it's actually Pretty Woman. I think I was mixing the two up, which I've never, I haven't seen either of those movies, and I have no interest, so, you know. Um... Kelly, shares in a movie? Huh, you learn something new every day. Anyway, as I was saying, Sam's alright. Oh, this is Kelly talking. I'm doing uh, Hancock's voice. Oh, well. Uh, Sam's alright. He just has a rough past. HC. <sighs> he leans on the table, which I'm sure you're about to tell me all about, right? <laughs> Kelly. Yeah, see, what had happened was... <laughs> HC. Wait, wait. Let me get comfortable. I can't take a sob story without a good chaser. He unbuttons his pants, unties his necklace thing, and lights a cigarette. Yeah, you gotta get comfortable when someone's gonna tell you a long-ass fucking story. God, I know that. HC. Okay, shoot. Kelly. Cool. Okay, see, what had happened was, me and Sam are kind of, like, the same age. This is, like, all in, like, now it's, like, blocked, like, paragraphs. Me and Sam are kind of, like, the same age, right? So we was kids together around the same time. Our dads knew each other, and they was they were friends. My family had... This nice-ass farm. Yeah, see, I bet you thought that pikeys are always ghetto from the womb to the tomb, right? Not always the case. My dad worked hella hard and rose above. Well, until a couple thugs working for a British repo shark scam came in the night and torched the farm for the insurance money. Assholes. Because, see, we only had, like, a couple more payments till the farm was ours, and they were pissed about that. So anyway, we were flat-ass broke, and we didn't know what to do. But then Sam's dad came through and loaned us some cash and decided to start up a Boston bank. Then blah blah, I don't know, some econ shit that I don't understand. But basically, they realized they could take care of their own business and not have to keep asking the motherfucking Brits for allowance money. But then, of course, the British didn't like that at all, so they came to our area, and they were all like, you better shut down the Boston bank, because that's not cool, and everyone was too scared to say anything. But Sam's dad came right up to them and looked them in the eye, you know, with the little squinty eye like this, imitates Popeye, and he was all, or else what? And they were all like, or else we'll break your kneecaps. And he was all like, try me. This is like, I feel like I'm in like a McWater podcast, because this is a lot of shit he talks about. Um... So they left, but then that night they came back, busted in the damn door, and kidnapped Sam's dad. Plus they beat his ass on the front lawn and then dragged him back to England to serve in a London whorehouse, never to be seen in the colonies again. H.C. <gasps> Did they break his knees? Kelly. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Whores with bad knees aren't very good. No offense to all the kneeless people out there. <laughs> shade of people without knees. <laughs> uh, which honestly just mentioning that will probably still be considered politically incorrect so you can't fucking win. Anyway though, whatever. There's more. So now we are all in hella trouble. We lost the Boston Bank and Sam's mom tried to support the family, but no one would give her a job because, you know, it's the 1700s and everyone's all like, women are garbage and they're not good at anything except having babies suck on their titties. <laughs> HC, mega harsh. Kelly, I know, right? Like, they literally said it to her face. But anyway, they hella needed, uh, money or they were gonna get kicked out on the streets. So Sam was about, like, 15 at the time. You know, still pretty much a kid but starting to look kind of adult, you know. So he went out to look for some way to support his family, but he tried so hard. He looked everywhere and still couldn't find any work. Finally, someone told him, well, there is one way that a teenager can make some fast money, especially such a pretty little teenager. 
HC, now totally into the story. Oh my god, no. <laughs> Kelly, yes. When he was no more than a child, he wound up submitting to the British, the soldiers that he hated, as an object of their pleasure. Now to this day, he doesn't know any other form of work. He's never been able to give it up. HC, what about the brewing? Kelly waves it off. Whatever. Anyway, he, has sworn, he doesn't even address it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, he has sworn off ever serving the British again after being treated like their slave. That's why all the hoes are independent and free. Um, or all the hoes here are independent and free. But the past can never be undone. HC crying, wiping the tears on his shirt. <laughs> that story was so sad. Kelly leans back in his seat and puts his arms behind his head, all sat self-satisfiedly. I, I really wish I could do an Irish accent or I had somebody to do Kelly's voice that could do an Irish accent so I could hear him say all this, like, hella this, hella that, and blah, 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 all this, like, <laughs> all this fucking, like, city, modern-day speak, you know? But, yeah, that would be funny. Um, okay, he puts his arms behind his head, all self-satisfied self-satisfiedly kelly yeah i do quite well for myself don't i no prep either all that came straight off the dome <laughs> sometimes i think i ought to enter a storytelling competition or something you think i got a chance at winning or maybe just an open mic or something less pressure Re record scratches loud and abruptly hancock instantly stops crying wait wait hold up you didn't just make up that whole story did you kelly nods smiling I did. <laughs> Hancock. That shit was all fake? Kelly made it up on the spot. Pretty good, right? Hancock face palms. <laughs> Kelly laughs. I thought you knew it was fake. Hancock. No, I did not. Ugh, I ruined my mascara for nothing. No, mascara doesn't come off with crying. Mascara doesn't come off after three fucking showers. God, Jesus. Eyeshadow comes off the first time. Eyeliner takes like a day. I, and, and mascara, the, the shit never fucking comes off, let me tell ya. Um, Kelly, Snickers. <laughs> well, okay, to be fair, it was based on some true events. Very, very loosely based. Hancock, why would you do that? Why would you trick me into thinking you're gonna tell me a true story, but then just bend it and twist it until it's barely even recognizable anymore, just for the sake of entertainment and drama and cheap, cheap thrills? I mean, who does that? <laughs> He and Kelly get super quiet then. This thing in the middle of my head. I need my bangs. Looks like this thing is about to explode, but it's not. I'm just happy. There. Does that look better? Where's my side part? I had my bangs cut by my sister. And I'm not using them. So the sunlight doesn't expose my flaws. Okay, there. Is that is that good enough? All right, where was I? He and Kelly get super quiet then and just stare awkwardly straight into the camera. <laughs> Kelly. Yeah. Who? I wonder. Another long and awkward pause. <laughs> Hancock shakes it all off. Anyway, what do you want to talk about now? Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Cut to a couple days later, a week, a couple of weeks, you know, winter is in full effect and the snow is coming down. Out on the streets, tensions are running high. Everyone is mad as hell. Why? I don't know why. Everything. Taxes, soldiers occupying everything, it's cold, nothing good on TV anymore, you name it. Outside, in front of some pinko store, a group of pissed off rebels are harassing the pinko store owner as he tries to lock up for the night. They're all throwing snow at him and yelling stuff worse than you'd get yelled at if you dressed up in a bikini and went walking around a West Oakland BART station. <laughs> Inside the B&B, in one of the back sex stalls, Sam is hiding and loading bullets into a pistol. He takes a breath and puts the gun to his head, <laughs> but he hesitates. And before he can pull the trigger, the door opens. He hurriedly puts the pistol back in the drawer and looks over. Honeysuckle and cream pie are standing there. Honeysuckle. Ready to go? Sam. <sighs> He nods, yeah. Outside, on the streets, the rebels are on a terror raid, harassing every pinko they see. Rebel number one. You're really just gonna walk through our picket line? Rebel number two. Go back to England. Rebel number three. You're all a bunch of pink chickens. <laughs> pinko. Get out of my way. Quit blocking my fucking store. Rebel. Four. Rebel number four. Or else what? What are you gonna do? Rebel number five. You like the red coats so much, you'll have enough red when we're done with you. <laughs> 
They all close in on him threateningly. At the corner of the street, there's a couple soldiers standing back and watching everything go down. Then we pan over to a different street. An alleyway, actually. We hear Sam's voice whisper from the shadows. Sam. Ready? Honeysuckle. Never more ready. Honeysuckle steps out of the shadows, carrying a little shoulder bag and wearing a short dress. The soldier guarding the nearby store is none other than Nervous Nellie. Oh, great. Shifting anxiously in the night as he listens to the rebels on the other block. I remember this part. Honeysuckle clears his throat, <clears throat> speaks all loudly and overdramatically as if he's on stage. Oh my, look at me, a helpless prostitute out on the streets, alone, at night. I sure hope no one does anything mean to me. <laughs> Nellie turns to look at him, huh? He quirks his head, looking at Honeysuckle like he thinks he's a crazy drunk. A crunk, if you will. <laughs> That's an old word. When suddenly, <gasps> Cream Pie comes running out of the shadows and snatches the purse right off Honeysuckle's shoulder. He runs off with it like a stereotypical thief. Honeysuckle, stop, thief, stop. <laughs> Cream Pie slips on the icy ground <laughs> and totally eats shit, falling flat on his face in the snow. Awkward ass pause. Honeysuckle tries to think of what to do. Um, he motions to Cream Pie to keep going. <laughs> Cream Pie picks himself up as quick as he can with the knees of his stockings all torn and runs off. Honeysuckle. Ugh. He goes back into character. Help, somebody, please, please help me. <laughs> Nellie comes right over in an instant and appears by his side. Nellie, what's the matter? Honeysuckle. That horrible stranger took my bag. Stop him. Nellie, even though he's afraid, wrestles up all his courage. Poor Nellie. He straightens his hat and goes running after Cream Pie down the block. Cream Pie looks back to make sure that Nelly is after him and stays just out of his reach. Uh, he leads him around the corner down the street. And they can hear the angry shouts of the rebels from up ahead. <sighs> but it's too late to turn back. The inertia is rolling. The energy. Oh my god. Suddenly they emerge right in the middle of a crazy ass riot. Nelly freezes and his eyes get all big as if he's seen the flames of hell. As Cream Pie vanishes into the crowd, Nellie's gaze sweeps across everyone else. He sees the Pinko store owner on the ground, fighting off some rebels, and runs over, pulling the rebels off him. Oh, man, it's getting physical now. Nellie, what the hell are you doing? The rebels growl and quickly turn on him. They look his uniform up and down. Rebel number one, why don't you mind your own business, Brittany? Rebel number two, yeah, can't you see we're busy? Rebel number three, go have a beer and sit it out with the rest of your buddies. They shove him away and give him a threatening glare. These people are so brave because these people have guns and shit and, like, try doing that now, man. Try just going up to some soldier with a gun and just push his ass. Yeah, I don't know. I would like to do that, but I don't think I would, you know, self-preservation and all. Um, okay, they shove him away and give him a threatening glare, waiting for him to leave. Nellie looks around for the other soldiers for backup, but they're gone. Not about to deal with this shit. <laughs> None of these people do their job. This is just a world full of slackers. Nellie growls back at the rebels. You better do as I say or I'll show you what the British Empire is made of. Rebel 3. Oh yeah, show us what? Rebel number 1. Yeah, you gonna do something? They all grab him and shove him around like Cinderella's mean sisters when they rip her dress up. Yeah, I don't know, man. These motherfuckers have ovaries for that. I don't think I would do the same, but hey, let's just roll with it. Nellie breaks out of their grip and scrambles away and yanks the rifle off his back. Nellie, stop it. Stop it right now or I'll shoot you all. I don't care. Silence comes over the rioters. The entire gang of rebels pause and look over at him in a mixture of surprise and anger. Rebel number one, darkly. So, you think that's how it is, huh? You can just oct you can just come occupy our city, take over our homes, and keep us down with threats. He gets closer fearlessly. Yeah, this motherfucker's brave. Well, go ahead then. Kill me. Oh, God. He has nothing to live for. Kelly wavers. Uh, I will. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Rebel number two. You don't look any older than my son. Rebel number three. Do you even know how to use that gun? Rebel number four. Go home to your mama. Rebel number five. He can only get one of us before he can reload. We'll all tear him to pieces. That's a good point because today they would have a machine gun that has what? Like, I don't know, 35 bullets in it or some shit like that. And then uh, they could just easily kill like everybody. But um, back then, yeah, you only have one bullet at a time. So that does make a huge difference, you know. 
And it wasn't easy to aim, so let's not forget all that bullshit. Um, he feverishly looks around at everyone, sweating, panicking. He aims his gun at different people, and they run out of his line of fire, but they never leave. They all stick around in a big pack, yelling taunts and stuff like that. And you get the idea. Nelly starts to hallucinate and sees the pale face of Satan here and there in the crowd. I, I picture that like the exorcist with sharp teeth and eyes like fire. Suddenly, one of the rebels grabs his rifle and tries to pull it out of his grip, but Nelly out-wrestles him and smacks him with the gun. Yeah, the true... Oh my god, it's 20 minutes. That's the true purpose of one of those fucking old-ass guns, just hit people with it. Um, before turning back and running for the safety of the buildings. Alright, let's cut it off.